Uh, welcome to one and all. So our team is here to demonstrate our project. My team consists of myself, Jashmita, Desi Karunya, Varshni, and Danushri. So looking into our problem, so over the past 20 years, air, air travel has like been increasingly preferred among a lot of travelers because of its speed as well as the comfort it produces, like and gives to the like passengers who travel. So this has led to the phenomenal growth in air traffic and on the ground as well. So this like increases the air traffic growth and it has also resulted in massive levels of aircraft delays on the ground and in the air. So the main problem here is that the passenger flights are getting delayed and the ones who get affected because of this problem are the passengers who are in emergency situation to reach destination. And the main issue is, see an airline flight takes off and lands later than its scheduled time. A cancellation occurs when the airline does not operate the flight at all for a certain reason. However, depending on why the flight was canceled, finding seats on a new flight seems difficult and it also affects the passenger's plans. So flight delay forecasting can enhance airline operations and passenger happiness, which will also boost the econ economy. Comparing the effect effectiveness of machine learning classification systems for predicting flight delays is the major objective of our project. So here we have used a lot of uh, models, like we have trained a lot of models and we have seen the accuracy and we have come up with the best one. And that will be explained by Blessy with the help of the model which you have built. Okay, so I'm Blessy Karunya and I'll be explaining the uh, working of the ML model that we have built. So first, uh, we have imported the required packages from NumPy Pandas and uh, SKLearn uh, and Seaborn. So we have loaded the entire data set using the uh, Pandas and we have stored it as a data frame. And then we have uh, uh, gathered the information about the data set. Then we have performed univariate analysis, bivariate analysis, and uh, multivariate analysis to uh, get an idea about the data and uh, about how uh, the values are present within the data so that we can choose the required uh, and the not required uh, variables specifically. So using the heat map, we are able to identify the correlation between the columns. Then we have performed the descriptive analysis to know the mean standard deviation and the minimum and maximum of every column in that data set. Then we have dropped the unnecessary columns. Here uh, we have replaced the data frame variable with the required columns uh, alone. Uh, instead of dropping uh, several other columns, we are, as we needed only a, a little number of columns for the prediction, we used, uh, we, we used the replacement method to drop the unnecessary columns. Then we handle the missing values. First, we identify the missing values in the columns. So here we can see that there are only two uh, columns that have missing values. Then we replace them using the more as they are categorical in nature. Uh, then we have checked if the replacement is made or not. Then a handling of outliers. Uh, we have checked if there are outliers using the uh, box plot of the Seaborn library. Uh, here, as there are no external points, we can. Uh, confirm that there are no outliers in this uh, data set. Uh, and uh, we are checking outliers only for the regression type of con uh, continuous data and not for the classification data. Uh, so there are no outliers based on the plot. Then we are encoding the uh, categorical values. Uh, actually, we, we won't be able to pass uh, string values to the machine learning model. So we can see that uh, from the analysis, we are able to verify that the origin and the destination columns consisted of uh, string values within them. So we encoded them uh, using one hot encoding method. Uh, we used one hot, one hot encoding from the pandas uh, library using the get the means function. So, so we can see that uh, each value in the column has a separate column now. Uh, that is each value in the origin and the destination columns have a separate column now. Uh, then we have uh, uh, displayed the columns that are newly created. So these are the uh, total columns that are available now. Then we have finally split the data into uh, dependent and independent variables. Uh, so uh, then again, 
uh, we are uh, converting it into val uh, numpy arrays uh, because the machine learning model will be able to uh, process them only in that form then we have split the data into training and testing data sets the test size is 0.2 and the rest of 80% of the data will be training data and 20% of the data will be testing uh, then we have built four machine learning models logistic regression decision tree classifier knn classifier and the random forest classifier so uh, we have built them and compared their uh, accuracies we have tested the models to before comparing their accuracies so uh, we have tested by uh, making them predict values and knowing the uh, value counts of each prediction uh, we have done this for all four models then uh, we have uh, evaluated these models using metrics uh, we have evaluated using classification report accuracy precision recall and fn score then uh, the confusion matrix we have also checked for overfitting and underfitting so uh, overfitting and underfitting is checked using the training and testing accuracy we passing the training data and the testing data so if there is not much variation between the training and testing uh, accuracy then there is no overfitting uh, but if there are other cases like uh, if the training accuracy is very less and the testing accuracy is also very less then the model is underfit and if the training accuracy is uh, exceedingly high when compared to the testing accuracy then it is called overfit and uh, then uh, we can we can see that in decision tree classifier overfitting has taken place you can see that the training accuracy is 100% and the testing accuracy is just around 87% so it is definitely overfit so we cannot use this model uh, and from above we can see that uh, the logistic regression has a decent accuracy score 91 and the, the other scores are also fine so we have considered that and then we can co uh, when comparing it with the other ones uh, the accuracy is comparatively low and uh, based on the confusion matrix also we can see that the false positive and false negative values are high in the other uh, models when compared to logistic regression so we have finally achieved at logistic regression model and uh, we have chosen that for the ibm cloud deployment too uh, we even tried uh, hyperparameter tuning uh, so that uh, we tried if we were able to improve the accuracy score of uh, logistic regression model but the results were not uh, much variant we gained almost nearly the same results uh, so we can see that the accuracy scores are uh, almost the same uh, so uh, we chose to uh, deploy the older model itself in order to reduce the complexity then uh, we dump this uh, model logistic regression model into a file called model.pickle uh, which uh, in order to be used with the flask file so now the flask uh, file building uh, the flask app building will be explained by version so uh, we have used flask for uh, creating the web application to predict flight delay uh, in the flask project structure we will be having the original python file which is uh, app which is named as app.py to run the application uh, the templates which contain uh, static html uh, css and javascript and other files and the notebook file where uh, we have created the model uh, and the pickle file where the model has been uh, dumped into so these are the files which will be contained in the uh, flask project structure uh, so now first i will be importing the uh, library libraries are necessary for uh, flask and rendering html elements so here we use joblib library for uh, faster loading of numpy arrays uh, so using the post method uh, i will be reading the html form in inputs given by the user and uh, coming to the a predict method uh, these are the necessary parameters i'll be getting from the user uh, and not all the uh, parameters and i will be appending it to the list so that it can be uh, framed data framed accordingly to be sent it to the model for prediction so coming down uh, in the pre process and predict function uh, i will be uh, uh, the data, the inputs are now data framed accordingly, uh, such that it is passed as correct parameters to the model for prediction. Here uh, we are considering totally sixteen features, and we have to make sure that uh, these sixteen features are correctly passed. 
so using the job lib library the pickle file uh, which contains our model is loaded and the predicted value is stored in the result so after this happens uh, the result html page will be rendered uh, which contains that which contains the message that uh, whether flight will be delayed or not so now we will see a sample demonstration by giving uh, user inputs in the html form so i am running the python file and this is available in the local server so i'll be uh, entering the flight number the month day of month uh, day of week origin and destination uh, the scheduled departure and arrival time and the actual departure time So now we have predicted with the message that uh, the flight will be on time. Now let's see another test case where uh, we will be predicted with uh, flight will be delayed. So this is the case where our flight is likely to be delayed. And this is uh, a simple uh, demonstration that we have made. So uh, our ML model uh, has been deployed in IBM Watson Cloud and that would be explained by uh, Dhanushree. Okay, uh, the, the ML model that we have deployed on the cloud uh, was uh, done by using API key and uh, scoring point. So this is the dashboard uh, of IBM Cloud. And uh, if we and if we go into the resource list, uh, we we can see the resources that we have uh, used. Uh, the three resources that we have used is uh, Cloud Object Storage and uh, Watson Machine Learning and Watson Studio. And uh, Watson Studio is uh, used for using the both ML and Cloud Storage. So uh, this is the dashboard uh, of IBM Cloud. And here we can see our project uh, flight delay. So on clicking on that, it would direct to assets page. And uh, as you can see uh, here, uh, the notebook that is included is using uh, IBM uh, Jupyter's notebook service. And uh, uh, in the notebook, we have made a uh, few changes uh, as uh, required for the service. And uh, you can see the changes uh, as uh, in the loading the data set. And, uh, and finally, our uh, model is deployed. Uh, and as you can see, it is deployed uh, and the status is uh, shown. And this is the scoring point link. Um, and thank you. So let us see the demonstration on IBM Cloud the, of the app that we have deployed. This is the uh, modified flask file that we have uh, deployed in the IBM Cloud. So see, we have modified the code by adding the scoring API key and the scoring endpoint. This is the API key. And we have also added the scoring endpoint. So uh, we, uh, you will be able to see that we have not included any pickle file over here. 
So this is the uh, flask file, which uses the uh, API key and scoring endpoint uh, of the model that we have deployed in the cloud. So we are uh, literally we are using the uh, ML model from the cloud. So let us try running this. This should give the same output as we saw earlier. Yes, so I'm getting the link. Okay, so this is I'm running it. I'm running the model from the cloud. Uh, I'll close the window. Okay, so if I give the input, I have to get the same output. Okay, we can see that we are getting the same output. Output. So uh, this is the proof that our model is working in the from the cloud. So thus we have successfully deployed our model in the cloud. So thank you.